Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Sethum and welcome to Sea Dogs to Each His Own. Now this is a pirate game, a sandbox open world pirate game where you kind of choose where you want to go, what you want to do, and it's pretty much up to you. So you have the option of being a trader, a pirate, a mercenary, it's absolutely up to you. As far as I know, the game was initially released in 2000. I'm not sure if it was released in 2000 in Russian and later on ported into English. So obviously the translation isn't all that great, but it is a good game. It's actually quite cheap on Steam and I'm glad that I found it because this reminded me a lot of a game that I used to play. Again, made by the exact same producers and company and it was called Age of Pirates 2 City of Abandoned Ships. I even played the first one, but I liked the second one, despite it having some massive, massive issues and bugs to the point where it was just more or less game breaking. Now, this still has some bugs as well, so I cannot alt tab out of it, otherwise, the engine crashes, but it's alright, it is a good game and it's worth playing. So, whereas in Age of Pirates, I got to choose a character and obviously play around with his stats this time around we are given this character and we can only choose his stats now obviously different stats will affect different abilities they will change throughout as you do or perform certain actions so basically the numbers you see here will change depending on how you interact with the world so if you do a lot of battles the stats that affect the battle so naval battle naval combat will increase um i kind of want to have an advantage on sea battles although having the capability to to get a better discount at the traders is also a good thing because they more or less rip you off in the game until you pretty much become skilled in that area so yeah I'm going to stick with the sea battle options so let's have a look a place of opportunities and mysteries I don't know what that was before the Spaniards are hunting for Indian treasures and magic in the false hope to bring the Empire back hmm back from what the Dutch are rich, but they want even more. Interesting. France is reborn and has ambitions. Ambitions that blinded even the righteous order of Malta. Okay, not quite sure what that is, but yeah. England will soon declare a total war on its own spawn. Piracy and pirates. To the full Brits see no room in the brave new world. To the tool or fool? I don't know. I don't quite get that one. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Malvolio in Twelfth Night? Well, that is actually a good quote. We got into such a terrible storm the other day. <laughs> oh, that Russian accent. <laughs> um, first of all, as soon as I get down to the bay, I'm getting drunk. Wake up, monsieur. Whatever your name is, we have arrived. Ah. What, already? God damn heat. <laughs> get used to it, monsieur. This is the only weather we get here. At least not any better. How could it get worse? I'm wearing one linen shirt and I've got sweat streaming down my side like hell. Hail. Okay. Don't forget your things. Hurry up, monsieur. The longboat isn't going to wait. You don't want to swim to the island, do you? Yes, I do not. Where is my sword? Ah, there it is. Yes, this isn't Europe. Be careful, Monsieur. Most people haven't welcomed those that ask too many questions here lately. Times today, as you know, have turned hostile. They say that the island was sold to some faith fanatics. I still haven't noticed any change in the usual way of the life of the Martinique inhabitants. But since I've been gone, a lot could have changed. Faith fanatics? What a bunch of baller dash. <laughs> Whether it's baller dash or not, rumors are going around. There's already enough adversity as it is. Cannibals in the jungles, fever, pirates, bandits in the alleyways. Oh, here we go again. Right now, the only kind of adversity that I've come across is the heat and the mosquitoes. All right, I'm ready. Shall we? 
Walk up to the top and step onto the longboat monster. Welcome to the Caribbean. Okay, that was an interesting dialogue. It definitely made me chuckle a bit. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking back on all the stuff that the guy said. So obviously, this is a translation from Russian, so some things may not necessarily match up, and it may sound a bit dodgy. And I have played this first section before. There are almost no true novel left anymore. <laughs> I love the Russian accent. Oh. Right, I'm not going to accept this guy's mission, so I'm, I'm not going to read all of the dialogues. He's basically a guy that's going to walk us through the town and tell us where stuff are, where you can find the shop, the tavern and all that. I already know we don't need to do it. If you're playing this from the beginning, I suggest you follow it. He kind of does give out good pointers, but I'm going to skip that tutorial. So... Hold up, Captain. Were you Russian also? You definitely sound Russian. Oh my lord. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm gonna have to get used to this. Right, so I don't really want to talk to you. So I want uh, to leave over. There we go. That's the option that I want. As you can see, yeah, people will stop you in the street. Uh, now I don't know why. It's definitely not my computer, but sometimes it can display a bit of lag it's possibly down to the engine but overall this is a good game and obviously it has been quite a while since I last played and I can roughly remember what the beginning quest was like if this is a series that you guys are going to enjoy please don't forget to support it and me and the channel by hitting that like button leave a comment down below with your thoughts and if you want more games like this and if you're new to the channel, why not subscribe? So I am looking at what I currently have in my inventory because I know that I am going to lose it. And I kind of want to keep my things. Um, I'm just trying to think of what the best solution is. Uh, ideally, I would like not to lose all my stuff. So I've got 500 pesos. And some gear on me that I really don't want to lose because if I go and speak to the governor which is what I need to do he's gonna put me in jail and confiscate all my stuff so I mean is it worth even trying I'm gonna go into this guy's place so this is the bank just trying to see is there anybody here Obviously, you can also steal from homes. Do be careful not to get spotted, because if you do, you will have the guards upon you, and you will end up in jail and most likely lose all the stuff that you have. Also, with this game, you basically don't get any chances. If you die, you die. That is it. Game over. So, saving is important. Okay, I'm trying to access this box so I can put my stuff in there. But for some reason, it's not working. Or maybe I'm pressing the wrong button. I know most of the controls, but there are some weird controls, such as accessing the trunks and boxes and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, I guess I'm just going to go and get it lost, whatever. I am going to get other stuff later on, so and it probably will be better than what I currently have. I just wish I would have had that advantage. I'm going to see if I can store my stuff somewhere here so obviously now if i were to access any of the boxes while that guy is in there he would alert the guards and it would not end too well so he's got another room the governor and uh, let's see what have you got here okay all right is there anything i can access i know this chest is accessible but i can't access it for some reason I think I'm pressing the wrong button. I'm gonna go and have a look at the options and I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay. Um, I'm pressing the right button according to the buttons map, but it's not working. Maybe it's locked, maybe it doesn't wanna let me do that. I did read somewhere that you can stash your stuff before you talk to the governor, but I don't know how to do that, so. I guess I'm just going to go and talk to the governor, get my stuff confiscated. I kind of do feel sorry for the 500 pesos that I'm going to lose, because I'm never going to see it back again. Okay. Oh, oh, 
that camera angle. I'm almost tempted to go outside and try and work on finding a way of stashing my stuff, but never mind. Please, what is it? What do you want, monsieur? Hello, Your Grace. I've arrived from Paris. I'm looking for Michael the... whatever, that guy. Perhaps you could aid me in my search. You're looking for Michael? Interesting. And what do you need him for? I'm his brother. My father told me that Michael was in trouble and he needs help, so I... Are you? I don't remember Monsieur de whatever having any brothers. You know, Monsieur, you look very suspicious to me, so I'm arresting you for further interrogation. Lieutenant, detain this man. But your lordship... Yield your weapons right away, Monster, and follow us. Well, I'm up the creek. So, as you can see, this first part of the game is actually story-driven. There is a lot of reading involved. And now I'm in prison, so I have to wait for the governor to come and pay me a visit. And obviously I need to wait for him because he's walking his way here. And here he comes. Good day to you, Charles. Let me introduce myself. I am Philip the Ponce, and I... Why the hell have you put me in prison? It's inappropriate. I'm a French nobleman and... Listen to me, young man, and don't interrupt me. You are talking with the Governor General of French Colonies in the Caribbean Archipelago. I forgive your tone only because of your ignorance about who you were talking to, but I'd recommend you to be more restrained in the future. Hmm, forgive me, Your Excellency. Better. Now, considering your previous question, you were considered by mistake a Spanish spy and put under arrest until your status is clear. Blasted Castilians have become more active recently, and therefore I ordered to detain all suspicious people. But we know who you are now. You are really Charles de Meur, a brother to Michael, and I personally came down here in order to release you. And you are yelling at me like a little boy. Pardon me, Your Excellency. I am free now? Yes, you are, but I want to talk privately with you before a sergeant will open your chamber. Do you know that your brother, one of the most worthiest warriors of the Maltese order, was arrested and put into custody? I only knew that my brother is in trouble and he needs a help. That's why I came here from Paris. As you'll see, the dialogue between the characters in this game isn't all that great, and that's because it's probably been translated from Russian. Glad to hear that. I want you to know that Monsieur de Whatever is in serious trouble. I have got all reasons to suspect him in an abuse of authority, a uh, misappropriation of property and in a uh, perjury. But you really can help your brother. Monsieur, could you tell me more? I don't get it. Michael was the pride of the order and... As I was saying before, you just saw that there. It really didn't make much sense, but it doesn't change the fact that the gameplay is pretty darn good. I thought so. We all did. But his recent actions made us unconfident in his loyalty to the order too unconfident so he was put under custody michael will tell you the details himself he will explain you how you could help him to take away accusations and avoid a disgrace where is my brother now you told me that he is in prison but i haven't seen him around did i say in prison young man are you listening i said he is under arrest it is not the same thing michelle is being kept under arrest in the underground base of saint pierre which is property of the order of malta I allow you to visit the base unlimitedly and to talk to your brother as often as you think you need. Officers and soldiers of the order are aware of my instructions and they will not stop you. Where is this underground base? It's here. Find the local prison and enter the door with the symbols of the order. Go downstairs to the Casamat and in the second levels of the basement. Find there, Monsieur, whatever. That's it. I hope that we will meet again, Charles. Sergeant. Please, wait, Your Excellency. And what about my belongings, my sword, and the rest? Your things were confiscated for a repayment of your brother's debt. Farewell, Monsieur de Meur. What the? Alright, so. We now need to go and speak to our brother. We've been released. So. Which way is the way out? Nope, that's not the right way. Okay, I think it's this way, yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> it's our okay. responsibility to yeah, be thank you very much. I know I can go. Do I need to talk to you? No, I don't. Okay, I'm just going to go to the door. Okay, uh, a bit of lag when we come out. Oh, that's quite laggy there. So yeah, it does do that from time to time, despite me having a seriously overpowered computer for this game. 
which I suppose is maybe one of the reasons it never went mainstream. Soldiers are always okay, so I'm going to speak to this guy just to be on the safe side. Normally, when you go into prisons or when you have a mission into prison, you need to speak to the guy at the desk. Otherwise, the soldiers will just attack you. I'm not quite sure which way I need to go now. Okay, there's a guy sat down. That guy doesn't look like the one I need to talk to. Here he is. No matter what you think, pleased I'm to see you, to brother. See I understand, of course, that it'll be hard for you to believe, but I'm happy as hell that you're here. Ha! Look at him. He's glad. So, while you were on your high horse with your society, Charles was the embarrassment of the family. A means the artist, a gigolo, a court knight, huh? And now that you're clapped behind bars by your own comrades, you not only remember your good-for-nothing brother, a street rat, but you're happy as hell to see him too. Charles, you... I'm not done yet. You had the gale to manipulate our father's feelings to serve yourself. So, so you know I came to this hellhole in the sweltering heat where the mosquitoes literally chew you to death. Not for you, but for a poor father. Really? Charles, since when do you care about your family? Let's be honest, brother. Everyone in Paris knows who is your father. You may carry the family name of Demar, but you don't want to have the... Whatever name, Dishonored. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to pronounce that name that they have there. So I'm not even going to bother. Because in that case, you won't be able to use your lineage in order to tell everyone fictional stories about your heroic deeds. Am I right? The doors of the best houses of Paris will be closed for you. And they won't let you come a mile closer to the Louvre. Do you really believe that your courtesans and mistresses, whose husbands you make cuckold, whatever that means, while they are fighting on the battlefield for our fatherland, will be happy to cheat on their lords and masters with a brother of a state criminal like myself. I guess you have arrived here straight from the bed of some married girl, am I correct? Charles, what is wrong with your face? Did I hit a nerve? Hey, hey. <laughs> Alright, okay, I, I, I'm getting the relationship between these two brothers. Let's crack on with the story. Alright, brother. We've barbered words. That's enough. I agree. I'm not perfect. But you're no angel either, Charles. This really isn't the time to quarrel. We've both got one goal to save the honor and dignity of the family, no matter what our motives are. Brother, for once in our lives, let's change animosity for peace. Deal? Let's try it out. But can you so much as explain to me as what you're being accused for? As you can see, there's quite a bit of reading to do in terms of the game. However, later on in the videos, I will skip over them. Officially, it sounds like the expenditure of the society's money. In reality, it's much deeper. So you've taken the organization's money as your own? Shame. I told you, those are the official charges. I didn't take a single Lewis door. What the hell is that? Here's how it went down. You see, I can't explain everything to you in detail. As far as even behind bars, I don't have the moral right to disseminate the secrets of the society. Please do try to explain, dear brother. I do have the right to know, don't you think? Fine, I had received money for a very dangerous and delicate operation which was supposed to shift potential balance in the Caribbean. I was acting by the direct orders of Philip de Ponty. He is a general governor of the French colonies, but the operation was failed despite all my efforts. De Ponty had a fit of anger due to the fact that all his long shot plans went broken. He had personally signed an order of my arrest and made sure it was performed. Then he came here and declared that he will accuse me of, whatever that word is, and treason against the order if I or my relatives won't return money spent on the operation. Here's a fine how do you do. Where is it? This money that I understand I'll have to pay out of our family for your muffs. Okay, so I kind of get the idea of what is going on and why our dear brother is now in prison. So basically this is going to lead us to the good old life of piracy in the Caribbean. It's spent on preparing the operation, bribes, organization expeditions, purchasing of all sorts of merchandise and equipment. I had a rather large expense. Just like I said, I didn't take a coin. And what is the sum that is being requested? And this is the point where we find out the good news of what we need to pay back, and it is an absolutely massive sum. One million. Murdy. Whatever that is. You're kidding, right? Do I look like somebody in a joking mood? No, dear brother, this is the bitter truth. We are to return to the Ponzi 1 million pesos. But goddammit, our family has nowhere near that kind of money. We couldn't put that much together in 20 years. If I wasn't behind bars and restricted by my obligations to the society, I would make it in 6 months to a year. A year and a half at the most. 
Charles, this is a new world. Everything's changing. A motivated, ambitious man can make a fortune for himself here without dedicating his whole life to it, like in Europe. A million and half a year. Are you off your nut? If you're so sure, then why don't you tell your Deponsi about that? Let him release you. Put your best foot forward. Oh, don't talk rubbish, Charles. There's no way Ponty is going to release me from here. If it was that easy, I wouldn't be asking you for help. So, I'm the one that's going to have to make the money for your freedom. Not just my freedom, or have you forgotten? Shall we return back to our conversation about the places, balls and sex with noble whores? Yes, Charles. You're the one that has to do it. If, of course, you'd like to carry on with your meretricious life in Paris like before. You would like that, wouldn't you, brother? But god damn it, where the hell am I supposed to get it? You know some old woods where Louis doors grow instead of leaves. I'm assuming that's money. Yeah, now that I think about it, it's probably referring to money or something. The whole new world represents a grove of money trees, yet people are too lazy to lift their dumb heads up and stretch out their hands to the branches. Don't worry, Charles, you can do it. I have been knowing you since our childhood, and I would never waste my time persuading father to send you here if you are dumb or lazy. Despite your downsides, I have mentioned before, you are brave, ambitious, smart, your tongue is hanged well enough, and you know how to handle a rapier, which is an extremely important skill you need to know here. Thank you very much. Has my dear brother really just condescended me? And I thought I was nothing but a pitiful artist, a quarter. Stop talking rubbish. Do you and I have an agreement or not? Sorry, brother. It slipped out. I'm just so unused to hearing those words from you. It's like a street whore preaching about saving a soul. Let's proceed, brother. As I said, you have everything it takes to become successful here. Not only that, you are not alone. I will help you with advice on what to do and how to do it in the right way. Listen to me and we're in flying colors. Believe me, there's no replacement for my experience. Are you ready to hold off the trash talking and finally get to the point? Yes, it looks like I'm staying here for a while. Alright, I'm all yours, Michael. Yes, brother, you are going to stay here for a while. It's good that you can see that now, so if some courtesan is waiting for your return back in Paris, I suggest you forget about her. But don't feel bad about it, local girls have their own charms. Though they like real man, strong and pushy, even rough. <laughs> so if you're going to fuck some colony girl, don't count on poetry, painting, discussions, or walking under the moon. They won't approve. All right, brother, have you been struck by a bolt of wind badgery? Let's make our way to the point. I am willing to listen to your advice, but not your foul insinuations. Splendid. In order for you to have any kind of success, you need to own a ship. The Caribbean is an archipelago. You did know that, right? Life is intertwined with the sea. A man with his own ship has endless horizon and earning potential. But I'm not a sailor. Then it's time to become one. You've got no other choice anyway. You didn't think of becoming a poor office clerk or registering into a garrison, did you? No? Then you'll be a captain. What a turn of event in my career. And where will I find a ship? There's an excellent lugger held in our shipyard. It isn't big, but it's a very comfortable boat, just right for making the first steps into the arena of a sailor. This lugger was built just for me. I placed a deposit of 5,000 pesos with the help of my friends. Make your way to the local shipbuilder and tell them that Michael sent you. He'll understand what you're there for. The ship only costs 5,000? That's kind of weird. Aye, I agree that is kind of weird, especially knowing the reputation of the previous games where ships are stupidly expensive. Brother, are you listening to me? 5,000 is just a deposit. The lugger's price is around 20,000. So you'll have to earn the rest of the money yourself. Besides that, you'll need money to hire a crew and a navigator. Great. And how do I get it? Not big surprise in that. Earn it. How else? There's money lying around behind every bush here. You've just got to know where to look and not fear adversity. Walk around the different establishments around here. Have a talk with the people. You're sure to get some kind of work. But be careful. There are much more con artists than there are honest people. You are not an honest man either. So you may try and steal from some houses. We are nobility, right? 
To be honest, that is actually a feature that I do like about this game, the fact that you can go into people's houses and rob them when they're not there, of course. Titles mean shit here. Work, fight, steal, just like anyone else. After you buy a boat, hire a crew. You won't be able to steer the boat in the beginning, so you'll need a navigator. You can talk all about this with the owner of the tavern. He'll help you. And make sure you don't get lost, of course. When you depart to sea, take the course straight to Guadalupe. What is that? A town? And with that note, I am glad that I have a map on my phone, because that is going to come in quite handy for this game. It's an island almost two days away from here. Yes, try to acquire a map of the archipelago as soon as you can and learn it like our father, so you don't look like a moron to everybody that can tell the difference between a town and an island. You're going to have to cruise around the archipelago a lot, so prepare ahead of time. Hmm, okay, so what do I do on this, huh? Guadalupe? Find a man there by the name Fede. He has his own house not far from the pier. Tell him you know me and ask him to repay his debt. He lost quite a hand to me in a game of cards. The money you get will help you get on your feet. Use it to get things going. What do you mean to get things going? I mean use this money to earn even more money and so on. Trading for example. We will return to this conversation later. Now you should deal with the ship. Then sail to Guadalupe. Find the fat Moscovite and beat the debt out of him. Not literally, of course. Fede is a very respected man of Guadalupe and a friend of the local governor himself, so there is no point in quarreling. On the contrary, try to make friends with him. Get back to me as soon as you have the money, understood, brother? Got it. Oh, why? What did I do to deserve this punishment? Don't sorrow, Charles. Accept it as an inevitable evil or a good You'll be grateful later to fate that life has taken this kind of twist. You, brother, finally have the opportunity to do something to prove you're a real man. You'll become a decent human being. Okay, so the options are that crap and brother, I don't have time for this. I want to skip this boring part and get right to the seas immediately. The sooner I have a ship, the sooner I will be out of the shithole. Or would you prefer I stay longer? Huh? This boring part might just save your life one day. Whatever. There's an easy way to get money right now. Go to the local church and talk to Abbot Benat. He's an old friend of our father. Tell him about the situation. Fall onto your knees and beg to lend you enough coins to buy a ship. Okay, I'm going to skip the tutorial. So basically it says much better now. Heading to the Abbot. Wow, that was one lengthy conversation. So, basically, our character is deep in the poop pan. And that means we have to earn enough money to be able to buy the ship. Obviously... Our brother has put a deposit of 5,000 pesos, so I think we need somewhere around 17,000 pesos. So I'm just having a look over the summary of our discussion just to get an idea of the order of things, just to refresh my memory. Um, obviously, that implies that we'll have to do several missions around the town before we even get to leave, because we don't have a ship, and in order to leave, we'll need a ship, so that sorted i'm going to go and quickly talk to the governor i think he'll give me some weapons and stuff if i remember correctly and after that we will head off to the shipyard and see if we can get the ship or hold on a bit which way is the way out ah there we are or maybe we'll talk to the... Hold on, I'm slightly confused. Okay, so this is the way we came in. Somewhere around here must be the exit. Maybe it's up here. I think it is. Ha ha ha. Okay, never mind. Uh, I was looking in the wrong direction for the exit. Alrighty. Um... So I'll go and talk to the governor. I don't think I'll be spending a lot of time chatting with him. Basically, he's sorry for what he's done and he'll give us some stuff to help us out. Obviously, he won't give us our original stuff because it was too good for the game. Um, so I am off to the shipyard. I'm going to talk to the shipbuilder. Let him know that I am going to collect the money.
so where is the shipyard if I remember correctly it's somewhere down this way and to my left that's a house oh hold on yeah that's a house there we go this is the shipyard let's briefly talk to this fellow over here who seems very busy our dockyards are I do love that Russian accent <laughs> Right, if you want to read what he says, just pause the video. He's basically telling us that he has a ship, there's a deposit, but we still need to pay, uh, I believe, 17,000 pesos for the ship. Anyways, that is it for this video, folks. I am going to end it here. If you have enjoyed this first video, and yes, I know there was a lot of talking, please don't forget to support me by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more similar content and why not check out some of my other videos who knows you might just enjoy them until next time stay safe folks